Kathy Vick here, and uh, I want to do a tape because uh, I may have worried some people. I don't know. Kind of worried myself yesterday. Not really, though. I mean, I say that hyperbolically because um, what I find is that when I let loose and finally state the truth, and I swear to God, sometimes that takes 30 years. And sometimes it just takes a freaking lifetime for that sentence to finally freaking form. Well, you saw um, something really beautiful the last couple of days, I should say. And yesterday, after I got done being a creative, I was just popping around the house and just going, well, I don't know, I just was. And I was in my vanity bathroom area and I looked at the bathtub and said, yeah, well there, that's what I need. So I got my most fragrant oils. I didn't understand the symbology, of course, until, you know, it's in my hand. I've never used that oil before. It's the finest. It's the finest I own. It's the most fragrant. It was a gift by, from someone who I really cared for and adored. And she, she, she delighted that I liked that smell so much, so she gave me a whole bunch of it. That was years ago. I threw Epsom salt in there. <laughs> and I got in and I got out, because I always do that. Oh, oh, it's too hot. <laughs> so I thought to myself, oh, well, I could be nice to myself. I could uh, like empty the bathtub, fill it up with warm water halfway, and then get in and then heat it up even further. It's simple things. <laughs> but anyway, I finally got in. And when I woke up this morning, I can't hardly move my whole body. And I realized, uh, oh, that was my bathtub time. Because I got in around 10.30, and I think I finally got out of about 3. <laughs> I was having visions the whole time, straight up, and um, I, I need to capture some of it in writing, but I'm going to really ride this effer bareback and tell you what I saw, because I just don't want to pussyfoot around anymore. I have a lifetime, a freaking lifetime. I have a natal chart. I have numerology up the ass. I have lots of things, lots of things, lots and lots and lots of things to back this up. And it's funny because I started like five years ago. <laughs> That's the punchline to all of it. I decided to write some of this stuff down in amnesia. And I started. I wrote, I started deeply awake. I was trying to explain something to myself. I kept saying that. I just want to know, you know, well, basically, I'd spent a lot of time looking out there and, and asking, what the hell is that? Who are they? Who is God? I did a lot of time looking outside and listening to channels. See, I can hardly move my head. <sighs> listening to channels who I considered an authority on all things spiritual. If they had a certain ding, like magenta pixie and cryon. What I saw in the bathtub, I will tell you. I had just described hell and heaven in very symbolic but very uh, easily manageable story bites and um, that was very helpful once something is described once it's outside of you and not inside of you you can talk to it and decide whether you want to keep it or whether you want to set it free but for me it takes getting it on the outside is pretty clear I was a pretty high 
state of meditation and uh, it uh, it elevated and expanded in the bathtub and I understood something very vital to this project and to my sanity and to my peace <laughs> lifetime stands. The confusion is beautiful. The ambivalence is perfect. The actors were close up and personal. The energy just the same. The storyline different. The gender different. Still dealing with plutonic issues, still dealing with identity, but this time the teachers didn't surround me the way they did last time, you know? I did it on my own. And then I wrote it myself. And I saw how much sense it made and how much peace it gives me and how impossible it is to tell anyone and how um, unnecessary and how much fun this next part is and how much fun I've been putting off uh, because I was dealing with these questions. I had many visions about um, woman, being a woman. What it takes to become pregnant, what it takes to carry the fetus to term, what it takes to be a mother, what it takes to be an all-suffering daughter an all-loving sister, an all-seeing wife. <coughs> I saw the roles, <clears throat> I saw the story, and I saw the idioms, I saw the metaphors, I saw the visitations, I saw the bleed-throughs. And I saw my friend. And I was given information that I already knew. How could I not? And I understood that my brother had gone. I've known it so long. But in this soup of understanding and remembering that was not remembering a group, was not remembering a group memory, it was finally claiming my own memories. I saw many, many faces as the visions came and went. It all started with this beautiful white liquid light that was like in flames. It was so pretty. And it came on to me. It started with my head, but I was encouraged to look at how it was helping every piece of my body. But it took me away. I just wanted to know. I wanted to be in it. It was a great coming into my body because I looked at that beautiful soul and he looked at me. And in full memory, I was able to honestly say, I am another you. You are another me. 
was able to do that. I was never able to do that before. I finally understood what it was he told he was trying to explain to me. When he came to me when I was a kid, he said, you are the Alpha and the Omega. He said, you are not me. You are not me. But you're going to be like me. And so many years later, I finally understood. I am another you. You are another me. I can say that to a beloved friend. I can say that to my son. And now I can say that to my brother. And I can take those memories and feel peace finally. Because I said something that I shouldn't ever have said, even though I knew it was true. And in so doing, it sort of breaks the spell, you know? I've been very scared about um, getting close to that. I'm not, I'm not him. I'm not him. I'm not him. He told me so. I'm not him. I needed that keyed as I was. I needed that um, distance. It would have been too much because I went on to treat a lot of psychotic people who were very hyper-religious. I needed to have my uh, individual identity. I needed to struggle with who this Kathy person was. I needed to find a way to forgive her confusion and awkwardness. Her inability to stop loving, even when it's in her best interest to. And her pain, when she finally does stop. Or at least when she says she does. That's the worst pain of all. But today I can't see it as a small, lost, spiritually abandoned single mom living a tenuous life in Denver. I don't see it that way at all. I don't see it that way at all. I, I know who I am. I know that that means that I'm, a six, I'm the sixth ray koan I hope that I share that with others. I can't see how I can't. I think it's a group effort because in the bathtub I was realizing, you know, this is September 23rd. There are people all over the globe who are having visions like this, who are coming to um, themselves in brand new ways that they didn't expect. They didn't expect this. I didn't expect mine. And after the bath, which I was finally, I kept filling up the bathtub. And then at one point, you know, the water was so warm. And uh, it was coming up and filling me up. And it's so warm. And I, oh, I'm in the womb. It feels like I'm in the womb. And um, it just was really, the whole thing was so pretty. But I saw the, uh, the you know, the lady in the sky with the 12 and all that stuff. And... I realized, yeah, well, this isn't something that's just happening to me. 
this is going to be fun. And that's how I felt. Once the initial shock wore off, and oh, oh, I really can own this? Oh, holy shit. Oh, I don't have to explain it to anybody, but I can own this shit? <sighs> Boy, do I feel better. I just do. I just do. And I was in the bathtub thinking, okay, well, <laughs> this is about Christ consciousness. Because I saw this, oh my God, that's another one. The imagery had always been my heart had been pierced all the way through with this big sword. And it was ho it was hanging on to these two things, one here, one here, light and dark, right? And I had visions about that. Well, if and I knew all you have to do is go whoop. And in the bathtub, I see, uh, dear one, uh, an impaled heart and two lines. Do you think it could be any more obvious? It was like that. Because then I saw the, the cross and all this. And then I understood, all right, well, there's this group or this entity who went, who just laid it out who went to Egypt went to went to uh, South America went to Alaska went he had to check on on the tribes man Lemuria sunk and pew, there was a dispersal and there were hubs of Lemurians and he went he was trained by Lemurians he was trained by Pleiadians and then he goes to all these places. He's talked to me about the the Egyptian thing, how um, an initiation monument, well, it looks different going into it and exiting it. <laughs> wow. That's somebody who's been through an initiation or two. Because <laughs> it's really true. As you're coming as you're coming toward something that is you know is inevitable and you know it's gonna change, it's gonna rearrange your freaking molecules. <laughs> you're going toward it. It's one thing. When you're leaving it, it's quite another. That was uh, the one where he was talking about seeds and pots and all kinds of stuff. It was a really, really intense one. Uh, I don't feel like a little girl anymore being visited by some a heavy hitter. And at the sink after this whole it, thing... I realize, okay, well, it's super great. That's great. Jesus is super cool. So is Mary. So is Judas. So is Pontius Pilate. So is Herod. So is Thomas. So is Peter. <sighs> Quite a band. All doing their own shit. All doing their own shit. And I've been lamenting. Why don't I have anyone? Why don't I have anyone? There's so many interior thoughts that finally, finally make sense. And so many feelings are so strong and unshakable. Part of my DNA that make no sense on the outside. It was a strong lifetime. It was the lifetime. It This is a do-over lifetime. I have said these words again and again, and that's what I realized in the bathtub. I've laid all of this out. The only person who doesn't understand, who hasn't put it together yet, is me. No wonder this had to be done in obscurity. <coughs> it wouldn't have been understood otherwise. The automatic pew, human response is, well, you can't be that cool. You can't be that big. You can't. He was a human being. He was a human being. He was a human being. <laughs> we, have, we have the same, we have the same burden. We, we, we took the same burden on. I have retrogrades all over my natal chart. I'm the female, and I came at the end of the age. 
Oh, it's just so beautiful. It's so pretty. And all I can think is, and I want to know your story. I want to know your story. How many other people resonate with this story to this degree? How many other people have needle charts like this? Have numerolo numerology like this? Have the relationships? I do. It, it, it changes what's, what's past, what's present, what's future. It's beautiful because it's me. It's this me that's writing point. That's how trusted I am. That's how respected I am. Who surrounds you? Whose deepest heart Are you an expression of? Who did you choose to walk with? <laughs> to say it changes things, well, I guess it does. It really does. And yet, everything's the same. Which is kind of classic for these kind of things. Yeah, it's the same house. Yeah, it's the same clutter. Yeah, yeah, my body is even more, more, <laughs> more uncomfortable to be in now than before. And yet something is new. I, I, uh, I don't, I'm not scared anymore. I'm realizing, oh, first it's the realizing of this and then comes its expression. Yeah, yeah, I can do super awesome things. You're going to do bigger things than me. Who would say that but someone of generous spirit and someone who knows the score? Jesus didn't need to lie. <laughs> Anything that is seen as a lie well, that's just the consciousness watching it, not understanding, and throwing tomatoes at it. No need to lie. It's, it's, it helps me understand that I really can let other people's issues go. I can understand being on hyper alert. I can understand the, the need to understand. And uh, like I said, I know my limits and I know how to accept limits. And there's certain things I don't, ha I don't have to ever think or feel ever again because I know something new that for me I can trust a bigger explanation a more profound reality with more humor so much more humor <sighs> and relief and relaxation what's there to worry about? Now comes the fun part, understanding it and then actually living it, accepting it, dropping all of that doubt. It's like walking out of a prison. I realized a few days ago that the prison I was most certainly in, I saw the complex and all the gray. And then I felt something 
And I realized that, really, that's a snapshot from a while ago. All the walls are covered over with green. All the doors have been eaten away. The wood returned back to the earth. There's nothing here but a beautiful, open labyrinth of greenery. And there's only friends here. It's been, a re it's been repurposed. And it was done, I, I did that. And it was done with and through and because of great love, acceptance. And if self knowledge cannot really be uh, ascribed to it, then it was knowledge of something larger that I simply knew to obey. This particular project started in 2000, 17 years in fruition. And it is, it is a phenomenal creation and what I understood yesterday is greater still at the sink finally after all of that realizing I walked into that crystal cave that crystal encrusted sauna that I made into a temple and in high meditation, in one corner is the Sananda group. They are looking at the cryon group across the room. The cryon group is a group that has to the right of it the Shiva group. And the fourth corner that Shiva is looking into is mine and I'm a whale and there I am a little sweating naked woman going <gasps> seeing all of this and letting it roll accepting the fact that I have vivid memories of a lifetime spent walking the desert. While abundantly aware, consciously, consciously able to spin everything. The big soul guiding it all, even the pen of Saul so many years later. It's nice to know. It's nice to be able to accept that. It wouldn't have been able to be accepted had I not done the research that I have. Have I had I not been able to go so far while remaining an amateur with astrology, numerology and many, many other things. I'm not worried about my own death. I'm not worried. And that's one thing I realized, you know, if I, if I, uh, I always said I was in love with Jesus, right? And uh, then I met Shiva and uh, things got really serious. So uh, is it okay if I just admit that, yeah, this is a lifetime I really resonate with? Yes, it's okay. I resonate with Jesus' life. That's the life that I lived. I am another you. You are another me. There is nothing evil with saying that. It's just saying the truth as I see it. 
and I am freed as a result of saying it out loud with my heart that's full of conviction and such relief. I'm not, this conviction is simply from being relieved. It's like seeing a pixelated thing for a really super long time, okay? <laughs> really super long time you see this pattern, okay? And then finally, finally, one fine day, there's just enough resolution or or distance or whatever to take a look at it a little bit differently and go, wait, hold the phone here. First of all, there's a reason I've been staring at this and making this my focus. And secondly, there was a message in this all along. Look, it's like that. What a wonderful thing to be able to give. What a wonderful thing to finally, finally, finally accept. Nothing else makes sense. <laughs> Nothing else makes sense. And then I couldn't admit it. How could I? How could I? That's like the one thing I was told not to do. And uh, furthermore, it's pretty much the one thing that everyone in the psychiatric and just normal community goes, uh, yeah, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's rule number one. <laughs> that's the crazy test. Oh, you think you're Jesus Christ? All right, well, here's a straight jacket. You want, you want Thorazine? <laughs> now or later. <laughs> so I don't think I'll be talking about this a whole lot more. Let this stand. But it means I get to learn some more stuff. And I can uh, open and loosen my um, definitions of reality and what I'm capable of. And uh, accept what I have been capable of, I think. That's just pretty much what I'm doing because I've done, already done some pretty spectacular freaking things. That's what, that's what I realized in the bathtub. That was the very first thing that happened to me when the white stuff came down, was realizing who and what I am, what I have cop to. It's not like I did it for anybody's enjoyment or benefit. I did it because I had to. And most of the things that happened to me that were otherworldly, that were obvious, that were uh, witnessed, um, I was just as floored as everybody else. The huge vortex I made in the sky that was thankfully photographed by some dude from Austin, Texas, a storm chaser. That Merkaba that I conjured, the nursing home that I shielded from a tornado and had explained to me that I had changed the timeline of the nursing home and everyone in it, and I felt really weird about that, and I would have that explained, and it's all documented, and it's documented in this, oh, holy fuck, what does this mean kind of voice, totally in amnesia. You're welcome. It sucked. <laughs> it doesn't have to suck quite so much anymore. And I, I got a dose of, uh, of, okay, well, how clear are you? Here you go. Here's your first. Here's a shot across the bow. And I got that. It's like, yeah, okay, well, that's highly distressing. Oh, holy fuck, that's a very, very distressing call. Huh. Huh. And it doesn't have one thing to do with my worth, my place, my future. Do I have to fight? Do I have to defend myself? Do I have to get all up in someone else's business? Do I have to? Do I have to? No. And this is something I could never do before because um, there, it didn't feel like there was anything here. And it was just attack and then response. Nope. <laughs> and I'm the son of Antares. It's not purely this 
Jesus Christian stuff. He came from somewhere else. And there's a lot that hasn't been said. A lot that couldn't be said. I understood there's there's a there's there I saw five there are five sets of writing <coughs> five sets and the four, four of those sets have mistakes they have obvious mistakes and you can just like I've said reading the bible is like it's like driving over speed bumps it's like here's truth lie truth truth lie truth lie that's what happened that didn't happen that ha oh look at what you're doing with that and what they explain, there are four of the originals that are seated with not things that can hurt, but they're not true. And then there's one volume that exposes the teachings of this man called Jesus. The message of ascension, of what is, what is possible, that there is no death. There is only living through light. And if you can see. And it's very well shrouded and hidden. And it had to be expressed, unfortunately, in very violent terms. Because why? Because the consciousness was quite violent. You notice that? Yeah. Okay. Well, here you go. Here's a psychodrama. Pray the stations. Do what you need to do with the blood, with the death. If you want to focus on that, you go right ahead. There will be some who won't. It's about ascension. And it had to be lived out so it could be understood, unfortunately in grander terms, <laughs> dirt blood, but at least you're looking, at least you're loving. At least you're accepting that there's something other than what's available senses. At least there's that. There's so much more. And the cognitive dissonance that we'll, we'll have to get broken through as a result of these changes will occur. To end, I want to tell you what I saw. I understood uh, that uh, they're, they, they kept talking. They was beautiful. I saw the fifth and sixth. I saw the, the this consciousness thing, and I saw, you know, uh, this unimpeded flow. <laughs> and then I saw its counterpart. <laughs> Finally, I saw resistance. But I saw this as two, like, two rings around some other thing but I just saw the two rings okay and they work together it was very pretty but then I saw this white light it was white and dark and they kind of went together and then I saw this white light begin to expand and get weird and pretty and stand up and then I saw resistance itself and I was shown many 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 metaphors resist and it began to morph and it was like mercury, it was weird. And it, it was supposed to be on a track, you know? It wasn't, it just went whoop. It stood up too and went Rrr. And the voice has said, see, there's different light on this planet. There's more light. It's so brilliant. And its counterpart, its counterpart, what makes it go? is morphing as a result. Resistance is becoming self-aware. What happens when resistance becomes self-aware? What I was told is that's an element. 
and I and I understood that what Melissa is working on, what Melissa and Esther are working on, this may be very helpful for them, because I I literally saw like planetary things, and then it turned into something completely different. It was like alive. It was it was sentient as it was moving, and then I was told resistance as a result of these changes and all is becoming self-aware. It's made from this liquid love. It's made from creativity and free will. Can self-awareness be harmful, in other words? Well, when something that was once dedicated to expressing and being and moving in only one way. When it suddenly realizes it can move other ways, and then it does. I will say that this was a, it was this was this huge, huge, huge white, like solar light, and it was then like beaming onto this weird morphing thing that was behind on a background, and so. I don't really get that this is going to raise up and become like, I'm going to kill you now. It's not like that. It's more like, oh, this, you know, resistance becomes something that you can work with. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? There's a lot more, but I'm tired. Um, and I'm, oh, 44, 44. And I'm thinking as I'm looking up, oh, I get to eat chicken. <laughs> I'm always like, at the, at the end of one of these things, I'm always, I'm always saying, oh, and I get to eat crackers and cheese and uh, cra and jellied cranberries. Oh, I'm so lucky. So here I am going back into my, uh, car well, is it carbon-based anymore? I don't know. My something-based physical body, and I get to break bread. I'm going to put some bread from the freezer into the oven, and it's going to be yummy. Ooh, I think I'll put butter on it. Ooh. So tasty. I give you this in great uh, happiness and firm commitment that you'll take it and run with it and go, whee. And hopefully go, oh, wow. So you have a dip like that, and it's really not a dip, huh? You're just understanding deeper things and deeper things and deeper things, and it gets kind of scary, and it gets kind of sad, and it gets kind of, ooh, thick, and then <sighs> look what happens. Rubber band, rubber band, rubber band. Ow, 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 ow. I can't do it anymore. I can't. Yeah, you can. No, I can't. No, I can't. And a little bit more. Yes, you can. All right, go. Pew. <laughs> Right, that's all I have to say. I have to get plates on the table. And I need to get Ben Gay. Because <laughs> I couldn't figure out this morning, why does the back of my neck hurt? Am I, like, having super bad um, sleep apnea or something? What the hell? This feels like I have a bruise. <laughs> it took me about an hour to figure out, oh, I spent, like, an extended time with with my body basically going, oh! <sighs> Pushing against ceramic. Yeah, it was real smart. I couldn't, there's no other place. I need to get one of those bathroom, bathtub pillows, I guess. And other adaptive equipment. Oh, God. <laughs> I want to be healthy again. I want to locomote easier. Is that a word? All right. I'm going to eat well, and I'm going to locomote just as well as I can. And I... Oh, and we get to have um, social time with our friends tonight. Oh, it's so exciting. Oh, it's so exciting. And it's just a beautiful day. And I go back to what it is I learned. And I'm happy. And it's not, it's not this, I don't need to explain this to you, fucker. It's not like that. It's like, yeah, well. If I tried to explain this, I couldn't. So I'm just going to sit here and smile if it's all right with you. I finally figured out that I can afford to. I finally figured out that I got more than enough. 
under this hood. I finally figured out that I don't have to argue with you anymore. I finally figured out, honey, any love that you and I shared. Huh. Well, thanks for reaching in, and you're welcome. Come home.